fellowship around your word. We pray that you will bless our ever and ever, that you will save those who are lost. We realize that we're living in the shadows of evening. Time's about over now. There may be a few souls just left that you would want to come into the kingdom. We pray that you'll help us to glean those out during this meeting. And we pray that you'll heal all your sick children that are needing. May your great presence just be with us night after night, day after day. Forgive us of our shortcomings and help us as we become closer to the end time that thy spirit will deal with us more presumptuously. Grant it, Lord. For we ask it in Jesus' name, thy son. Amen. 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 Be seated. Praise the Lord. It is good to be here in New York, New Jersey tonight for my first time that I ever visit your wonderful city. And to be over here, I was asking a cab driver coming from the train station a few moments ago, what was the population? I said about, about 500,000, I suppose, about like Louisville. He said, I think it's 3 million. And I said, well, that's the way it goes, you know. <laughs> but, um, and I understand it's, it's, um, it's this is just across the river from New York City. That's very fine, wonderful place. And we are had a few meetings in New York, and uh, the city of New York, and we find wonderful people wherever we go because they're God's people. Amen. And so we're always happy to be associated with such people. We're a little late tonight to begin the service. Last night I had the coldest ride I ever had. <laughs> I got on the train at Louisville, and they fixed the... Uh, the trained the coach that I was to ride in to come up here, and uh, they said, there's no lights in it right now, so if something went wrong, we'll fix them at Cincinnati. Cincinnati to fix them, and they went out again, and there was no heat in it. <laughs> so we had a really a rough time and come in three hours and something late this afternoon, or late evening, so we were uh, fortunate to get here. So we find out you got plenty of snow, so that goes good with the eastern states in this time of year. I like it. Only about two weeks ago, I was in Miami where everybody was in swimming, yeah. and then come here. But someday, all the curses of the earth will be lifted when Christ becomes king, and then we'll have no more cold weather or hot, sultry weather, and God's people shall rule and reign forever on the earth. We're so happy and looking forward to that time. And now, to be here with my good friend, Brother Hudson and Brother Joseph Bose. And this was supposed to be my vacation. This fall, I started a vacation. I liked to hunt real well, so I went out west to go hunting. The party that I went with, including myself, all broke down with this year Asian flu. We didn't even take our guns from the cases and come back home. Then, a little later, after I said, well, the Christian businessman who sponsors my overseas meetings and so forth, they was going to take me down the river of no return. Just when I got down the river of no return, a plane come over, and I thought, that's strange, a plane. You only see one plane or hear it once a day. Well, it's in the evening or night, about 11.30, the mail goes over. It's the, the so rugged, the mountains, until the planes can't get down in that place. But, but here was a little plane, just about a mile high. And I was standing out fishing on a rock, and turned around and went back, dropping a little parachute. Howard, my brother, had just passed away. He was trying to get word to me. I rushed home, and about two hours of time I had the funeral. Many of you remember Howard has been up here in New York with him. The Lord had showed his going six years ago. He would be the next one to go. Then uh, I said, I'll go over to California and have this meeting, Lakeport. I'll come back home, and then I'll take a little vacation. When I got back home, they called me and said, Brother Bosworth dying in Florida. Well, I went to Florida last week to see Brother Bosworth, and the Lord has spared his life. and. So when I got back, I thought, well, my honey, said to my wife, I'm going to take a little vacation. I got a telegram about an hour. Brother Hudson said, Brother Brandon, please come up here. Brother Bose got on the phone, and, well, there you was. I said, well, honey, oh, Christmas holidays, please. I want to be home a little bit because we want to Africa this, this summer and uh, overseas to be gone practically all summer. And uh, so up come ministers, and I said, I'm sorry, brother, I'm sorry. I just, I just got to have it. Well, Brother Doherty came up, a good friend of mine from down in Kentucky, he said, Brother Bram, I'm glad to take the holidays. And I said, well, my wife and children is too. So, but finally talked me out of it, so I had to be down there. So there's no rest for the <laughs> <No>. weary. <laughs> weary. 
Well, someday across the river we'll let you. Yeah. Across the river. Now, tonight, I am, as usual, here to be your brother, to help you in anything that I can, for the spiritual grace of God, to instruct, to help Brother Hudson and, and those in the church and the call. We're not here of any denomination. We don't have any denomination. And we're just here to be your brother and your friend. Amen. And there's no barriers or race, creed, or color. See, we're just all one in Christ. Amen. And so we want you to feel real at home and invite your pastors and them if they don't. Some of them have already called me and apologized that the meeting comes to quickly, just a little farewell meeting for a brother here before going overseas. And uh, they apologize to have their own meetings going on at this time while we're here. But we just come in to have uh, maybe, then if one person gets saved, what, it'd be worth all his whole lives and everything else. That's right. That one person might hit the mission fields and save 10,000 people before Jesus comes. That's right. So now, just want to talk a little because you got plenty of good preachers. You're not needing preachers up here, but I always place myself as a staff house. You know, you always carry a spare on, whereas you have a flat. Now, we haven't got a flat, but, but uh, we have, we're going to use a spare maybe for a little bit. And that's each night now, and I believe Sunday afternoon, it's the close here, and Sunday night in, in New York City, I was Brooklyn. I get it all mixed up. It's all New York to me. There's every bit of it. And um, so Brooklyn's where we'll be at for our Sunday, for Sunday evening service. Now, tonight, I just want maybe to... Billy, my boy, Brother Hudson called him up to the hotel and said, I want you to go down and give out some prayer cards if we know there's just been this many. And Billy come back and said, no, you can't give out prayer cards. Not enough people are giving out. You think they give out about 12 or 14 prayer cards, nothing like that. He said there wasn't many gathered in yet. Cold weather. Well, you know what, down in my country, you wouldn't get anybody out in this kind of a night. They wouldn't come. It's too cold. And um, so we... Uh, but we'll just pray for the sick anyhow. I won't keep you very long. And then tomorrow night, if the Lord willing, I'll preach tomorrow night, the Lord willing. And also a prayer line as the Lord leads. Just pray for the sick. And um, now the reason sometimes that we give out prayer cards, my, some, I got my two tape boys here, Mr. Mercer and Mr. Gold here, and they have their tapes and the tapes of meetings. And they have them, they sell them just that a real and margin of what they cost. They go with me everywhere I go, and they've got many of the great services. And if you have a tape recorder, I'm sure you'd appreciate these tapes. And um, so them are, if Billy can't get here, one of those will give out cards each evening, night, brother. Now, uh, well, I guess it's evening. I, I get this thing all mixed up. When I get up here, I have to watch what I'm saying. Down south, we have breakfast, dinner, and supper. Up here, you have uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm short a meal when it comes time. I didn't get my supper. I, I don't know. So I'm, we Southerners may be just a little odd, you know, <laughs> the Yankees up here. But the war is over now. <laughs> the war is over. Now we're all together with war on sin and on sickness. And I want to read just a little bit tonight. And there might be some people here that I have Perhaps I have never seen in my life. Perhaps this. Never been in one of my meetings. Well, frankly, I don't know anyone by face at this time. I believe this mad brother here with the, with the beard, I believe I've seen him somewhere. I might be, not be sure. Have you been in one of my meetings, brother? I really thought I remembered him by having a beard and hair. He reminds me of Brother Ryan. What about that, Gene? Doesn't he look like Brother Ryan? You remember Brother Ryan? He's just such a wonderful, dear friend of mine from up in Michigan. Just gone to be with the Lord recently. But now I want to explain. Uh, how many sure want to be prayed for tonight? Raise up your hands. Let's see. Well, I guess then that'll be fine. We'll just pray for the sick then. I'll just get to me something else maybe. Or, let's see. I'll, I want to read a, a verse of scripture here, anyhow, found in the, the 12th chapter of St. John, 21st verse. Very familiar, but just to get a background to talk on healing. There were certain of the Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same, therefore, came to Philip, which was the Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Now, that's a very familiar little scripture, but I'd like to ask this in this little group, 
What if this was the last night they would ever be on earth? Do you know, before the, we close, I got a message that I had here not long ago in California on the handwriting on the wall and about the modern Sputnik, if it's in the Bible and so forth, and what it means to this generation and the hour that we're living. And I trust that the Lord will let me speak on that before going and uh, leaving the meeting. Now, we're at such a late hour and such a time that there's nothing in the world that counts outside of Christ. There isn't a thing that you can put your hands on but what is, is natural and it will perish. But Christ, the invisible one, is the only thing that's eternal that we have tonight, is, is, is Christ. And we love him. And so now, if he was in Brooklyn, or well, Newark tonight, if Christ was in Newark, New Jersey tonight, what would you look for? What type of a person would you look for? Now, we know that the Bible teaches in Hebrews 13, 8, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, now, if he is the same, now he, if he isn't the same, rather, well, then the scripture's wrong. And if he is the same, there ought to be some way that we could know that he was here. Don't you believe that, John? If there's some visible way that we could know. I believe that he was human. I believe he's interested in the human race. He died for them, gave his life for them. And now, if, we, if I would go across the street, I've seen a sign that was over there, that, across the street of a brother that has services over there called, I forget just the name now, I'll just read it when it comes up. Now, if I go ask the brother, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever? He'd say, yes, sir, Brother Brown. If I go down the next corner to another brother, wherever, each one of them would say, yes, I believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I ask this group of people here tonight, Christians, I presume, do you believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? You say, yes, Brother Branham, I believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then if he is so great, and he is the same, and they seen him in the days yesterday, then why can't we see him today? That's what I wonder. Right. Now, if he is the same, he's, there's only one thing different in Christ than when he was in Galilee, is that tonight he's in a spiritual body instead of a corporal body. Right. Now, when he was here on earth, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, the vine doesn't bear fruit. The vine only puts the energy into the branch, and the branch bears fruit. Right. You don't gather fruit off of the vine. You gather it off of the branch. Every branch of me that bringeth forth not good fruit, St. John, he cuts it off, prunes it, the church, and what more. Now, the fruits of Christ, when he was here on earth, the things that he did when he was here on earth, he promised that they would be done by his church after he left. The works that I do shall you do also. Greater works than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Greater, if anyone who knows Greek knows that that word greater doesn't mean that it would be in quality, it means in quantity. In other words, it would be more than this shall you do, would be the way we would read it. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Great, because no one could do any greater work than he did because he raised the dead, he, he stopped nature, he, he done everything that could be done. And he stopped the rolling sea, made the winds be still, raised up the dead after they were done, corrupted in the grave, and, and no one could do greater in quality. But being that his spirit would come into the church and would reach out, it would be a universal church all around the world, and they could do more of the same thing that he was doing. Now, then... We look at what type of person he was. When we find him, he wasn't different from any other man to look at. He was so, well, we would call it simple, dressed, and so forth. So he went among men, and no man knew him any different from anyone else, hardly, but only his disciples. Something he would be talking of, and he'd walk right among the people, and they didn't know who he was, because he was all men dressed just alike. If we would be looking for him, we would look for some great high priest and dress altogether different to make himself look different from anybody else. He'd just be a common, clean-dressed man if he lived today. 
And that's the type of a person he would be. Right. He wouldn't be so culturally and so highly educated and so no one would hardly know what he was speaking about. That's the Bible right. said the common people heard him gladly. Amen. That were just people like, yeah. like you and I. We were just common people. The Bible is written in such a common language until the scholars and educators, they take a word like this. They say, this word means so-and-so and so-and-so. Come to find out, it was spoken in the everyday street language, and they missed the meanings of it. Yes. Well, you know what? I, in my times around the world, you know what I needed a, an interpreter more at than anywhere else? It was in London, England. Yes, I thought I spoke English till I got there. And I realized that I didn't speak English. No, I, I couldn't understand nothing they were saying. They couldn't understand me. So one time I was in Miami, and I called up here to New York. Someone was on the phone, and uh, I had a connection, and the, and the little operator at the south couldn't make this little northern operator understand what she was talking about. And they had to break it down at St. Louis and get one to interpret it between the north and south, right here in America. That's right. Well, Jesus spoke with such a plain, everyday language that you'd hear on the street. And now if you try to use a very high, scholarly English interpretation of the look where we would be tonight. My, if I'd stand up here with some Greek, well, you might understand me. But uh, uh, ordinarily, just the run of the, the people wouldn't understand if you use such high grammar, good grammar. So God did it that way because he said he would hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent and would reveal it to babes such as would learn. God is not known by how much education you have. God is known by what faith you have. God's not known by science, neither is he known by any culture, but he's known by faith. And through grace he projects himself to his believers. It's through an act of grace that God projects himself to the people. If we would start to follow him for a little bit, then we would know more about what type of person we would look for. Well, we know his birth, and we're going to celebrate that soon, the Lord willing, at the Christmas time, how he was born in a manger and so forth. But then we find out that that wasn't just exactly uh, the Christmas story. Uh, many times if you read the Bible, we find out that this Christmas story we have going to Mary at the manger and a little baby. It, that's fiction. You know, the wise men didn't come to know a little baby. They come to a young child, two years old or better, you see. The Bible said they killed all the children from two years old down to get him. He's around two years old. But we have all these little things that just become the little fictions and little stories that we've told. However, in it all, God is glorified. Now, we want to see him at his work. Now, Jesus was born for one purpose. That was for God to manifest himself through that body. Amen. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He was a body that was made visible that men and women could see what he saw and his expressions to the people and his gratefulness and his attitude towards all mankind. He expressed it through Christ. Christ seemed to be a dual personality. He would speak sometimes and they'd scratch your heads and and, uh, they didn't understand him. He'd speak one thing one time, look like him, something else another time. Right. What it was was Jesus speaking and then Christ speaking. Jesus was the man. Christ was the God that was in him. Not me that doeth the work. My Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Yes. See? God will not share his glory with no one. So it all comes by the Spirit, but Jesus was a virgin born in order to tabernacle the Holy Spirit of God first to manifest himself to the people, and he gave his life a willing sacrifice that through the, his righteousness we unrighteous people might have a right to come into the fellowship like he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. Now that is in grace and glory what he did for us. Then, then to think that the day that we're living in that so many people cut off that privilege from the yes. people. Yes. While you're, we're living millions of miles below our God-given privilege. Right. The church of the living God should never be divided. We should be one and together. We should never live under our privileges as we are today. The great powers of God lay within the reach of every, every member of the body of Christ. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. And it shall be given to you. I was reading in the lecture the other day 
Why, over there in Luke, that scripture I was just quoting, the region will give it. When thou prayest, he said, here's what I want to get to. He said, if you should say to this mountain, be thou plucked up and cast into the sea, and believe in your heart that it's being done, believe that it is being done. Now, lots of people, they say, take from me, brother. All right, Lord, help this dear brother. Give a prayer for him best you can. And he's seen others heal night after night, time after time. But I didn't get it. I'll try to get it tomorrow night. Oh, my, you, dis, you discredit God. You discredit his word. What? If you believe in your heart that it's being done. Maybe that mountain looks just exactly like it always looks. But in your heart you believe it. There might not be but one little grain of sand. But something tearing loose. Something begin to take place. See? When we believe that it's being done. Right. But you see, we just want something spontaneously that we're to run. And what do we get? Left out. Left out. Because it weakens us. In a few nights, I want to get on to that. Faith, the Lord of hosts in you. See? Now, but now to see Jesus. Now we find out that when you see Jesus, you see God. That he that see me has seen the Father. Why say a stand and show us the Father? John 14. Uh, when Thomas said, show us the Father, and it was satisfied. He said, I've been so long with you, you don't know me. When you see me, you see my Father. The Father was in Christ, in Jesus, expressing himself to the world. Now, we watched him at his beginning when he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. At the day when God came in to dwell in him, when John baptized him with water, he went straight into the wilderness and was tempted of the devil. Don't you see, just as soon as the spiritual blessing actually happens, look for the devil to stand there right then right. to rob you of it if he can. Right. Uh, he took Jesus through every twist that could be taken. Yeah. He got him real hungry first. He said, if thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus come right back with not his power, not his gift, when all the fullness of God dwelled in him, but he didn't use it. He brought it down to where the weakest of Christians could have the privilege of using it. He said, it's written that man shall not live by that alone, Amen. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There you are. Man shall not live by bread alone. Then Jesus was taken under temptation to the pinnacle of the temple and said, perform a miracle for me. Let me see it done. You see, that same enemy lives today. Yeah. Let me see something. <laughs> Let me bring you somebody. You heal them for me. That's right. See, it's the same devil. That's right. The devil takes his man, but never his spirit. God takes his man, but never his spirit. The spirit that was upon Elijah come up on Elijah. From Elijah to John the Baptist, on down. The same spirit that was in Christ is on his church and will be till Jesus comes and unite that body with his in glory. Certainly. Never his spirit, but his man. Satan comes down with a religious man, just as religious and renowned as he can be, and he'll work for him to persecute the church of the living God, take his man, throw it up on another. Look at those Pharisees and Sadducees. What scholars they were. How educated, how smart, how holy. They had to be born of a certain lineage. They had to come out of a certain tribe. They had to be so scholarly and so holy. But yet rejected Christ. Yes, sir. And I say it with respect, but the same thing takes place today. That's right. God is moving with his spirit through the earth, doing signs and wonders. And listen here, my friends. I don't want to scare you or harm you, but I want to tell you the truth. You're looking for something to happen that's already happened. The next thing's the coming of the Lord. It's went right over your head. You didn't know it. Remember the day you're living in. Take heed to what you're listening at. Wake up yourself. A few days ago I was speaking. Someone come for an examination of that picture of the angel of the Lord. And it was referring to it as the same angel that left led the children of Israel after this um, famous play he had got here, the Ten Commandments. Uh, Cecil DeMille tried to put that play, uh, play on, of those Ten Commandments. The pillar of fire that led the children of Israel, that was the angel of the covenant, which was Christ. When he's on earth, he said, I come from God, I go to God. 
And when he, before he came to be the Son in spirit and flesh, he was a pillar of fire. Yes. He returned back to the same thing. Right. Paul, when he was on his road down to Damascus to persecute the church, there was a great light hung before him and put his eyes out. Right. No one see it but Paul. Christ can appear by here tonight, and one can see it, and the other can't see it. Right. He reveals himself to who he will. But he's had his picture taken out with the mechanical eye of the camera here in Germany and around all the world. And it's proof hangs right here in Washington, D.C. now. And there was a hall of religious art. And only supernatural being was ever photographed. What is it? It's him expressing himself that he's here. And you're going to wake up too late. There wasn't a newspaper packet, not a magazine got it. Why? Why didn't they get it? God can't be in this day any more than he was. They never knew who Elisha was till Elijah was, Elijah was gone. That's right. They never knew who Elisha was till he was gone. That's right. They never knew who John was till he was beheaded. Yeah. They never knew who Jesus was till he was dead, buried, and rose again. That's right. yeah. They never knew who St. Patrick was, the Catholic Church persecuted him until he was dead and buried. Then he canonized him a saint, St. Francis of Assisi, what we would call today a walking preacher with a Bible under his arm. Yeah. The Catholic Church, he protested it, and they hated him. But after he was dead, then they canonized him a saint, Joan of Arc, yeah. who saved France, a spiritual woman, who saw visions and prophesied. The Catholic Church burned her as a witch. Yeah, right. right. And such is a witch and burned her. A hundred years or more after she was dead, they realized that she was a saint. Well, they done penance, sure. They dug up the priest's body and threw him out in the river. That was a penance. But just the same, they didn't recognize her until she was gone. Yeah. <laughs> and so is it today. The Holy Spirit's moving among the people with great things and showing himself, even let it be known, and they won't realize it until it's gone. They don't realize that God promised the you. say, well, when's he going to do these things? That's what the disciples said about John. They didn't understand it. They said, why said the prophet Elias must come first? Jesus said he's already come. Yeah. And you didn't know him. He can't be one thing in one generation and something else in another. He's yeah. got to continue the same. You look, Jesus is here now, and this is your opportunity. This is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Well, for him. See, this is the hour. This is the time of deliverance. This is the time God's calling out his people. Not another time, now is the day. Manifest himself, showing himself. Then here we come tonight before this 50 or 75 people with a challenge that he's raised from the dead. If he is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a awful person. I, I am a deceiver. If Christ has to raise from the dead and will meet wherever two or three gathers together according to his word, then I'm bound to false witness and every other preacher is to the preachers of the gospel. Can you get people to listen to it? Certainly not. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They mocked, they scoffed, they made fun. So did they. Look at the people who Lot tried to before the destruction of Sodom. He went and tried to tell them, but they said, your idle tale. They wouldn't believe it. So he's got to do the same thing today. It's a message that's truly unadulterated gospel and scripture. Hallelujah. And the people have to reject it Amen. to fulfill the word. Amen. Although no matter what he does, they still won't believe. The Bible said that though he had done so many miracles among them, yet they could not believe it because Isaiah said they got eyes they can't see, ears they can't hear. As they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and be converted. We're living in a, a wonderful time for the believer. Right. And we're living in a terrible time for the unbeliever because he's rejected. And remember, the very thing that destroyed the world saved Noah. And the very gospel that they're laughing at today will rapture the church and destroy the unbeliever. Amen. <coughs> That's right. Amen. How true. Now we're in the last days. <clears throat> when Jesus, at the closing of the Gentile dispensation, <clears throat> I'm not a, much of a dispensationalist, but I know that there is a dispensation of the Gentiles. Jesus said so in Matthew 24. And now the end of the Gentiles, I believe this revival has just struck, is showing the end of the Gentiles. Jesus said also in Matthew 24, he said, when you see the fig tree and all the other trees putting forth bud, know the time is now." even at the door. This generation shall not pass into all 
be fulfilled. Just think of it. Not only was the Jews the fig tree to put forth his book, but the other trees. And every church has had a revival and have been for the last few years. The Pentecostals, you've had a revival. The Baptists have had a revival. The Presbyterians have got a revival. And the Jews are returning to Palestine. This generation shall not cease until all be fulfilled. A generation is 40 years. There are 12 years of it's already passed, and it's become a nation on May the 6th, 1946. We're at the end time. Jesus promised these things for the last days. We're privileged people to hear them. Don't pass them by. Enjoy them. Receive them. Tell others. Embrace them. God doesn't live in glamour. God lives in humility. Glamour comes from Satan. He lives in humility. When he was sure on earth, he become the humblest among man, the poorest among man. Who was not want to glamour? Satan. He wanted his kingdom greater than Michael, so he set it up in the north. Tried to outshine it. Son of the morning. Now, notice when he was sure then, after his temptation started, he went through and endured his temptation. Why? By, uh, how? Through the word. Stay in the word. We got a day. I know there's not many here, but I like to express this. We got a day when the world is getting full of, you can see the, the things about over. The world, what would be spiritual, has become ism. The world, what would be spiritual, has become a place where it's one off on to fantastics and emotions and so forth. They don't stay with the word. The word is God's way. God's word is, will endure. It'll stand the test at any time. But we grow up on little emotions and excitement and everything, and that's what kind of trouble we get into. Right. Now, let's watch Jesus in the beginning and see what takes place now. We see him the anointed Messiah. Walked out there and he's having a meeting. The first thing, the people begin to come. He was praying with them, and results were taking place. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same, that's the kind of a meeting he'd hold today. Uh, Not a place denying the powers of the Father. He would be proving the powers of the Father. Right. Yeah. That he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Now, we find out he's having a meeting. There's a man by the name of Peter come to him. Jesus had never seen him. And he said, your name is, is Cephas. Uh... Or Simon, the son of a Jonah, uh, son of Jonas, rather. Your name is Simon, the son of Jonas, but hereafter thou shalt be called Peter. <laughs> what a strange thing that was. Yeah. You're, you mean to tell me you know that my name was Simon? And that my father's name was Jonas? And then you're going to nickname me now and call me another name, Little Stone? <laughs> it kind of startled him. But it was the truth. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same yesterday and forever, he has to do the same today in order to be Jesus. That was a fisherman of Galilee. We see then in St. John, I believe the first chapter, we find out there was a man by the name of Philip who got saved, gave his heart to him, become his servant and follower. And the first thing you know, he goes and finds another man. Uh, who was a friend of his, a very good church member, and he lived around the mountain several miles. So his name was Nathaniel. So Philip goes over, he finds Nathaniel, and said, Come see who we found. Now what? Now Nathaniel represents the entire Jewish nation, believers. So he finds Nathaniel. And he said, Come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the yeah. son of Joseph. Yeah. And he said, This Israelite was down under the tree of praying. And when he got up, he said, Now, wait a minute, Philip. Could there be any good thing come from Nazareth? Yeah. <laughs> and I think Philip gave you the best answer that anyone could. He said, Come and see. Yeah. Be satisfied by yourself. Yeah. I imagine along the road as he talked, he said, Now, Nathaniel. When you go, you know what the Messiah is going to be. The Messiah is going to be Jehovah, veiled in flesh, shrouded by a body. He's going to be born of a virgin, says the prophet. And he's going to be a man, but he's going to be the God-man. And God knows all things. 
Sir, this Messiah is going to be a wonderful man. And we know that this Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. I hear Nathaniel say, now, you wait till I go. I'm going to to find out just for myself. And then I'll give you my opinion after I get to talk to him a while. Well, Jesus is having a group of people being prayed for, we'll say. And the next day, here comes Nathaniel up with uh, Philip. And they stopped out into the audience somewhere, or maybe they got in the prayer line to come up so he could meet Jesus. I don't know how it was. But however, when he got in the presence of Jesus, Jesus looked over at him, just a common Jewish man, and he looked over at him, and he said, Behold an Israelite, in whom there is no guile. Well, it's so astonishing. I guess he wondered, Who told you that? How did you know me? Have you or somebody been talking to you about me? That's the way God is. He knows you. Amen. He knows what you are. He knows what you're made of. Amen. He understands it. Yes. He said, how did you know me, Rabbi? How did you know me? And Jesus said, before Philip called you yesterday or whenever it was, when you were under the tree praying as it was, I saw you. Yes. What I drew yeah. a mountain 30 miles away, looked to a mountain and saw him on his knees praying. Yeah. It proved what he was. Yeah. Then that story astonished this Jewish Orthodox believer until he said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. Yeah. You are the King of Israel. Yeah. What was he? The Chosen. The selected, the foreordained, the predestinated of God by the foreknowledge, God before the foundation of the world knew He'd be there. God's infant. Somebody tell me what the word infant means. You couldn't explain it. He's omnipotent, om- omniscient, om- all powerful. Infant God. He knows every flea, every fly. Before the world was created, he knew it would be that way. He knew this meeting would be tonight. There he is. And when he comes in the presence, there in the body of his son Christ, this Jewish believer, set by heart the rabbi of heart, the son of God, thou art the Christ, the son of God, now look at the real orthodox teachers which stood by. Now when they seen this miracle performed, they said, this man is a fortune teller. He is the Elzebub. Oh, yeah. He is the chief, he's the greatest of all the fortune tellers. Oh, yeah. Now his, his inspiration comes from the devil. Yeah. And the devil has made him a king. And now he comes down to deceive our people with these things. What did Jesus say to them, them teachers? Why, he said, you can speak that against the Son of Man, he'll forgive you. But when the Holy Spirit has come, what we have tonight, speak against that, and it'll never be forgiven you in this world or the world to come. Then what position do we sit in tonight? What are we to reject Christ? Now, we have churches and we have great things which we appreciate. If it was any kind of a church that speaks the name of the Lord Jesus, let it be that church. Yes. I don't care if it's Catholic, if it's Protestant, if it's Jewish, whatever, if it's, if it's Seventh-day Adventist, if it's uh, Russellism, whatever it is, yes. no matter what it is, yes. I'd rather see them trying to do something for God yes. than out on the street living in lust and things like the world are doing. Yes. Certainly. But, brother, in all of this, there's got to be somewhere, there's got to be a showdown to truth. I believe Christ will honor each believer in each church. Whoever who has their heart right with God, God will honor that person. Right. Catholic, Protestant, whatever he might be. Yeah. yeah, God knows your heart. Now, you can't hide it. God knows your heart. Now, we'll notice him. Now, in that day, that was, that's what that Jew said. He represented every believing Jew, because the believers had gathered to him. Jesus said, wherever the carcass is, the eagles will be gathered. Yeah, yeah. 
That's right. They gather to him. Now let's take him over for one more statement to the, the Samaritans. Now this is St. John, the fifth chapter. Now we find him in the, uh, going up, but the, he was going to Jericho. If anybody knows geographically, Jerusalem sits on a hill. Jericho's in the valley. And on his road going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, he went right straight down. But he had need to go up by Samaria. Now, Samaritans were half Jew and Gentile. They were a mixed bunch of people. Why did he have to go up there? What was the compelling something that was driving him up there? Did you ever know men that are led by the Spirit of God can't understand their own selves? They are driven by force. Yeah. But sometimes they think, why did I ever do that? But it's God working in them. Sons of daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Look at Simeon in the temple that morning when he is promised by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death till he sees the Lord Christ. Came right out in the temple led by the Holy Spirit. Like straight to that little virgin standing there with a baby in her arms wrapped in swaddling cloth. And picked that little baby up in his arms and said, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Look at old blind Anne. Anna in the temple of prophetess, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And she served the Lord day and night in the temple by fasting and praying and being spirit led. She comes by the Holy Spirit blind. Right straight and picked up the baby yeah. and prophesied over him uh, for those who waited for the consolation of Israel. Jesus, led by the Spirit, went up to Samaria and sent all these disciples away to get victuals in the city. And that was when John got angry with them because he wouldn't sell them anything to eat and wanted to burn the city up. <laughs> Later become the disciple of love. Now, we find that while he was gone, a young woman, we believe in this country to be a woman of ill fame. She came out to the well to get water. While she was at the well to draw the water, she looked over, sitting against the little panoramic something on the media, scene like this, and there sat a middle-aged Jewish man sitting there. He was about 32 or 33 years old, but according to the scripture, he looked to be around 50. They said, you say that you've seen Abraham and you're not no more than 50 years old? He is worth how to put that look on him. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. That wasn't Jesus. That was uh, God in him speaking out. That He was in the burning bush back there at the beginning. Then we find that this woman, as she looked at Jesus, wanted a conversation with her, said, bring me a drink. She said, well, it's not customary for you Jews to ask the Americans such. There was a law of segregation. They didn't want uh, any fellowship together. And Jesus let her know that that wasn't right. He said, but if you know who you were speaking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And I bring you water you don't come here to draw. He said, our fathers worshiped in this mountain and you stay at Jerusalem. And the conversation went on. So Jesus contacted her spirit. Right. And when he's seen then what the Father sent him up there for, yeah. he knows something's going to happen. It hadn't happened all along the road, so he waited until he got there and sent his disciples away and said, this must be the woman. That was Jesus, the man. But God, the man, in Christ, knew what he wanted. He just uh, led his son by the Spirit. Yeah. So then God goes to work and begins to use his own son's lips to speak. He said, go get your husband and come here. He said, I don't have any husband. He said, you're saying well, because you got five husbands, yeah. and the one you're living with now is not your husband. Thou hast said well. And listen to what she said. What did the Orthodox Jew say when he done that miracle on him? Was that a miracle he done on Philip yeah. or Nathaniel? Yeah. No, where he was at the day before? Was it a, a miracle he done on Peter, who knew who his father was and what his name was and so forth? Now look, at that was the Jewish. Now let's see what the Gentiles are going to say, or the, the Samaritans, which is half Jew and Gentile. So now, um, uh, sir, this woman said, sir, I perceive, he knowing I had five husbands, I perceive that you are a prophet. 
Now, this is your word. But we know, the woman said, we know when the Messiah cometh. You believe it was the Messiah? Right. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. He'll show us all things. And we know he'll come, but we, you must be his prophet. Now, wait, what did the Jews say? Thou, rat, thou art the Son of God. Yeah. You're the King of Israel. Yeah. What the Samaritans say? Now, we're looking for such as that to happen, but it has to come to the Son of God. The, Sam Sam uh, the uh, Son of God, when he comes, the Messiah, it must come through him. But you must be his prophet. He said, I'm here to speak to you. And on this, she ran into the city and said, Come see a man yeah. that told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? Yeah. Isn't this the sign of the Messiah? If that was the sign of the Messiah at the closing of the Jewish dispensation, it's the sign of the Messiah at the closing of the Gentile dispensation. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Before he left the earth, our time won't permit to go further. But before he left the earth, he said, The works that I do shall you do also. Uh, the same thing. Yet a little while, and the world won't see me no more. That's the world's order. You see, the world won't see me. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you. How long? To the end of the world. Yes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. One more little scripture. I quote it quickly. St. John 5, the next page over, the 19th verse, when he passed by many crippled people, he healed one man laying on a pallet. He knew that that man had been that way for many years. See, he knew he had been that way. He healed him and walked away and left great multitudes of lame, blind, hawk laying there. What? Yes. Yeah. Left them there. And what happened? Why, they questioned him about the man packing his bed on the Sabbath and so forth. And Jesus, and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. Right. But what he sees Amen. the Father doing, Amen. that doeth the Son likewise. Amen. That was Jesus yesterday. That's right. If he's the same today, he'll do the same today. Right. There was a little woman who had no vision. But she had a leading, and she went down to where Jesus was at at the seashore. She had a blood issue. She touched his garment, for she said in her heart, If I'm to touch him, I'll be made whole. She goes back amongst her, the people, sits down, or however she was, might have stood up for however it was. Jesus turned and said, Who touched me? Uh, now, he didn't know that was Jesus speaking, the Son. Somebody touched me. And Peter rebuked him. He said, Well, I was touching you. Why do you say who touched me? He said, but, but I've gotten weak. The word virtue means strength. Right. Virtue went from me, or my strength went from me. Somebody touch me. That was the Son of God. Right. Hallelujah. Well, you say, oh, brother, friend, I wish I would live in that day. I'd like to have touched him. This is that day. Is that scriptural, Brother Brown? Absolutely. The Bible said that he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Yeah. How would you ever know you touched him if there wasn't something that come back and told you? Yeah. See, faith is not something, it's not a myth. Yeah, no. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence that something's happened, of things not seen. It's not just, just to make belief and say, well, oh yes, hallelujah, I got it. That's been too much in you Pentecostal people to begin with. You're rejoicing about something that you don't have. Faith is absolutely a substance. It's not a hope. Hope is, uh, hope is a, uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for. But when faith takes it, it becomes the substance that you hope for. Amen. That's it. See, the evidence of things God seen. Yes. One of the managers, Dr. Vail, and I was arguing that for an hour and a half the other day. He tried to say hope and faith is the same thing. I said, no, hope. Hope is what you're looking for, and faith is what you got for hoping. <laughs> right. Certainly. It's not a hope any longer when you've got it. That's right. It's yours. It's in possession. You've got it. Just as happy as you can be. For it is the substance of things hoped for. Now, this little woman said within her heart is faith. Said if I can touch him, it'll satisfy me. Amen. 
He'll come anywhere. Yeah. Certainly, just a few minutes before coming up here on the plane, on a train, rather, there was a lady who was in there with a girl. She was in a motel. She had been over to Brother Roberts' meeting and down there, and Brother Roberts had prayed for the little girl, and they couldn't find nothing, and oh, she was in terrible shape. And my wife kept telling me, she said, Billy, I hope you can get a few minutes. And they was in the hotel, and sitting all around. I just come up from Kentucky in 25 minutes of time to catch my train. And my wife said, please, spend five minutes with the woman, will you? If I can get her here, I said, I'll just own the road. And I run over to the place, the little motel where she was at. I said, sister, she just started weeping, the mother did. There, sitting in the room, the Holy Spirit began to move down. Come down and begin to reveal and went back and told the little lady something she'd hid from her mother and everything like that. From everybody she started weeping, said, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. How could it stop it? The angel of the Lord was there and began to reveal it. She said, that's true. I said, sister, confess that. That's the only thing's wrong with you. She went away happy and rejoiced and said, oh, if I'd only know this before. See, there you are. See, it's Christ. God's son, let us pray. Father God, we humbly come to thee now, thanking thee for thy word. Now the word has been spoken. Here's a few people here tonight, Lord, that's gathered in, many of them, are needy, or they would not have raised their hands for prayer. We know that they need you, and there may be by chance some in here who does not believe that sinners, if they are, Lord, may this be the hour when they realize that they are more needing of thee tonight than all the sick people in the world. Their soul is sick. Maybe they've tried to believe. Maybe they've, they've made believe, but never been a real believer. And we realize that unbelief is the original sin. He that believeth not is condemned already, because it is not believed on the only begotten Son of God. And you have said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. Oh, how thankful we are for that, Lord. And in this day, there's no more guessing. Thou hast made thyself known, and blessed be thy name for doing so. Pray tonight now. Uh, I shall try to minister in thy name. Now, I ask that in this little group of people that you'll send a faith in here, Lord, Hallelujah. that will believe. Yes. Now, Lord, I just got in a, just a little while ago here in the city for my first meeting, and I pray thee, Father, that thou will help me to manifest your love to these that you sent out tonight to hear. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll do it. And may these tell others, and may many be saved and healed. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, my beloved friend, I'm just, I promised I wouldn't be late, but I am late, later than usual. We ought to have been gone by now, but just got to talking to you. Tomorrow night, I'll be here early, the Lord willing, speak to you on a gospel subject. Just now, tonight, just talking, and, you know, we're getting acquainted with each other. And uh, I, I trust that, now, Billy said I think he could only give us just, just a very, very few prayer cards. And um, tomorrow night, you go around and get your sick. Not because you know, well, you know better than that. See, I um, want to see your people healed. We don't care if, they're, if they're colored, if they're yellow, brown, if what, if they're Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, Jew, if they're Mohammedan, Buddhist, or you bring them. Yes, sir. I found strange. I wish I had time to say something now. The American people, oh, my dear loving friends, you don't realize how bad off you are. Just think of it. I met Brother Osborne in the day. First day here, I said, I'm going. <laughs> Is a little cult and so forth. It's in a place where people don't know what to believe. I feel so sorry for my people. My. What can we do? There's nothing because the Bible said it would be that way. They'd go from east from west. There'd be a famine, not for bread, but for the hearing of the Word of God. That's right. The prophet said so. It must be. Now we're here, friends, tonight. We don't know whether we'll any be here tomorrow or not. That all depends on God. If you sick people here, I, I, if there's any way that I could do anything to help you, I'd do it. If I know you were sick and and something would tell me if I'd take a quarter of a peanut and lay out there on that street and push that peanut with my nose around the corner right in the public square here and it'd make you well, I'd do it. Now, God knows whether I mean that or not. If I'm a hypocrite, I haven't got no business up behind this pulpit here at this Bible. 
That's right. I, I, I know what sickness is. I've had much of it myself, and I know what it means. I couldn't heal you, and there's not another man on earth can heal you. Your healing is already purchased. Healing is a finished work. I have no healing in my hand. I have you must be mistaken, Billy. It must be somewhere else. All right? Just stand right there, lady. Just right there. Who has 51? Prayer card 50. Well, stand right here from the side of the stage. 51. Raise up your hand with you. If anybody has it, surely. This lady here. All right. 51. 52. 53. 54. 55. Billy, get an usher and come here this morning. 55. 56. 57, 58, 59, 60. Let's see if we got this thing here. I believe that would be about 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Got two out. Maybe it's all too many. Maybe it didn't get out that many. All right. 60. All right. Now I want to, I want to ask something. Press hard. Um, He's two missing, he's only eight here. Are oh, you the use the usher, what he's there? And this usher, too? No, it's just two out yet, somewhere between 50 and 60. All right? I want to ask you something. What does the Bible say? What's always been a confirmation in the Bible? The mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. All right? He's trying to get them lined up. All right? If uh, a lady's very sick, would you all sit in one of those chairs, Brother Hudson, there's someone holding someone there, which is maybe be very, very sick for it. All right. Now, 60, 61, 62, 63. <laughs> I must be his name's rules, though. All right. Now, just be real of it. Now, tomorrow night, you get here early, about 6.30, so you want to interrupt with the rest of the services, and some of the boys will give you prayer cards you have we, the reason we give prayer cards, I'll show you. See, here's what it is. Now, tomorrow night, I don't know where we start. This world the Lord puts on my heart. But, see, there's, two, there's everybody. So, if there's three of these ten people here, these ten to be prayed for, he's going to be first. Mm -hmm. well, I'll get for just one. So it might be a three. might get two. might get ten. See, who would be first? You don't know. Say, tonight, maybe there's fifty out of a hundred here. If there's a hundred, say, there'd be fifty. Well, who's going to be first out of that 50? We can't get the very many fixed visions. It just, you know what it does. See if anybody's ever been to me. So you, you just, just pass out. They bring the cards before you. They shuffle them all up together. Right before you. So you don't oh, give you this, this, everybody wants them to have. All right. Then what takes place? What does it take? If I got number one, or if I got the first, well, first 10, I, I won't, well, it might start at 25. Mm -hmm. So this may have one, one back over here, have another, and way back up here, another, you see? That way it's just to us. But that has nothing to do with the healing. We may not be one of these people get healed on a platform, and every one of you out there may be healed. How many of you don't have a prayer card room for the Lord to heal you? Raise up your hand and say, I want to be healed. All right? All the thing I ask you to do then, now here, these people are coming up here. What's that to do? Just with the Holy Spirit, the people to believe. Now, you do believe, but you're looking for such a mysterious thing, such a sensation, that it goes right over the top of it, you see. Do it look for a feeling. Jesus never said, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? See? Not a feeling, a belief, a faith. See? You just simply like a little child. Say, Lord Jesus, well, of course, the man just read it out of the Bible, and here it is all through the Scripture. You're just the same through every age. And we see what you was then. Tomorrow night we'll take what you used to be back in the Old Testament, whatever it is. He's just the same. So if you're the same, your work has got to be the same. He said so. But you see, you say, Lord, is my eyes so blind that I can't see that? Have mercy on me and open my eyes, Lord. That's when you'll get some work. And then like a little child, say, thank you, Father, for something happens in your heart. Then when that certain something happens in your heart, then watch what takes place. Watch what the Lord will do. Now, he used here in the prayer line, you can have your call. Now, I want to ask you something. I suppose that all of us, we're strangers to one another always. I don't know you. That's right, raise up your hand. You in the prayer line. You know what I don't know. You know nothing about you. Raise up your hand. Okay. All right, that's good. How many out there in the audience knows that I don't know you? Raise up your hand, you sick people. 
Now, see, I'm a stranger. Now, if there happens to be someone around who never... No, no, I want you to be real reverent. Now, if Jesus is the same yesterday and forever, and... Is this the lady be pretty for? Come here. Now, this lady here, I believe... Did you raise your hand if we didn't know each other? Is that right? Now, here's a, here's a perfect case to begin with. Here's a lady that's never seen me, and I've never seen her. Now, here's a picture that I talked about a while ago, a woman and a man meeting for the first time, the woman of Samaria and Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Jesus, his body, corporal body, has been taken up and stepped at the right hand of God. We know that. The Holy Spirit has come back upon us. The Spirit of God that was in his body is up on us. Is that right? Promising the same thing. Now, if this woman, I don't know what's wrong with her. She looks like a good, healthy woman to me. She may, she might not be for health. It might be finances. It might be domestic. It might be some other trouble. But now, just watch now and be real ready. Whatever her need is, if she will go to talking to God about it, and God will reveal it back to me, what she has need of, then who will know if she's in prayer but God alone? Is that right? Now, you do the same out there. You don't have to be up here. You be right out there. And just go to praise. It's the same thing don't take place. Now, that's an awful challenge. But I've done that before 500,000 at a time. See? Of heathens and witch doctors and everything standing there would shed your blood in a second. See? Well, watch Jehovah when he goes to work. Watch what a different attitude. That's what makes the difference. This is your, my first visit to New York. Don't let it go over. Not by me. See? I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking of him. Your pastors here represent him in a certain way. They've been gifted to do that. I'm not a preacher much. But this is my gift. Now, if this is this standing here who's a total stranger, we don't know each other, never seen each other in life, and this is our first time meeting, she's standing there and I've asked her to pray and ask God for whatever she has need of, if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what her trouble is, what she's asking, would that be the same act that the Lord Jesus did when the woman of Samaria come up and he knows what her trouble was? Would it be the same act? Would that prove that Jesus was the same yesterday day and forever? Now, here's our hands, both of us with our hands up. We've never seen each other in life as far as I know. She might have been in the meeting, but she, I don't know. God knows that. I don't know the woman. Know no more about her than, than, I, and, than you do if you don't know her. Now, I don't say that he will. I don't say that he will, but he may. If he does, then you all start believing. And see, if he isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever. May the Lord say it. Now, lady, I, I just have to talk to you because as you're speaking, it's just catching your spirit. That's exactly it. To see what you, you, I want you in your heart, see, to be praying to the Lord for what you have in it. If it's finances, if it's whatever it is, or if it's sickness, or, or somebody else, or, or whatever it is, you just be praying to the Lord. And now, Father, I've spoke to this group tonight. I'm at the end of my road. I tried to say just as reverently as I could what you was yesterday and saying you're the same today. And now it's your time to speak. The invisible God who is omnipresent. I pray that you'll grant these blessings that these people might be your servants and serve thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, uh, I don't know what your trouble is, and we're just meeting your first time. I'm not repeating myself, but you can imagine what a nervous strain this is at this time, because I'm either going to be found a false prophet or a liar, and if I'm found a liar, I quoted the word, and what's the word? <laughs> then where are we at? What used to have in churches? If we're just going to have churches to go and gather around, try to do good, why don't be a Buddhist church? Why don't Muhammad? Why not just have a temple of continuity? Anything you want to believe or anything you want to say, just come together, just make it alive. But we speak that there's a living God who lives now, just the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he promised these things. I believe him. I believe him. And I'm sure you're believing too, because no one probably might not see this. Between you and I, there's something that's happened. Now, as a, as a, a mortal being that's got to meet God, 
If this is the truth, just now, something comes to you, a uh, real weak white feeling. If that's right, raise up your hand. See, right now, they probably don't see it, but right around you is that line. And then, just to the side of it, is death. And it's a, a hideous thing. It's a cancer. And that cancer is, I see him examining for that. That's in the jaw. A cancer in the jaw. Not showing outside, but it's inside. A cancer of the jaw. And uh, that's true. Now, did you hear that, boy? That, that wasn't me. But whatever said the truth, is that right? If it is, wave your hand like this, the other. Now, you see what I mean? That's just the Holy Spirit taking my voice. I, don't, I just look and what I see, I say. Now, the more you talk to the woman, the more would be said. Now, would you like me to talk to her just a little more? Amen. Let's just talk again, see. Now, if we just got a few here, now let's talk to you just a little, uh, a little more. Now, I don't know what he, what he said, but it seemed like there was a shadow. Now, it's gone from you now. I don't see it, see, at this time. Now, I see the light returning. Yes. Yes, it's a lady, and she's something in her jaw. Cancer. In the jaw. And you come here with somebody else. A friend brought you here. You're not from here. You're from a place, Brooklyn. A tribe of Now, do you believe? Let us pray. Dear Lord and Savior, Thou art so true, and your words are so true. I pray thee to open the understanding of this people tonight, that they will understand that it's your presence, Lord, that it's your word being made manifest. And you spoke the world into existence with your word. And the same word that spoke it into existence says it will go out. And you spoke life and this woman lives. And Satan is trying to interrupt her with some disease. And I pray with all my heart that you will remove that disease and cast away the spirit of disease upon her and may she go free tonight by her faith in the Son of God. Amen. Bless you, sister. No room for you to doubt, is there? Just don't believe. Now, do you believe with all your heart? I believe, is there a way there somewhere? Um, now, don't look down. Now, the blessed Holy Spirit, how many have ever seen the picture of it? Let's see your hands. The picture of the angel of the Lord has been taken in, to, was taken in Germany and different countries. Now, that's right here in our little group tonight. That's here in this little theater building tonight. The same spirit that walked in Galilee in a man called Jesus of Nazareth, who was the Son of God, who promised these things to be done. Now, here it is again tonight. Now, be the irreverent, be prayer. Now, here's another woman. This is a more picture than the other for the little scene that we were speaking of, the, a Jesus and a woman. There was a Samaritan woman, which was of another race. And tonight, this is a colored lady standing here who is another, she's not an Anglo-Saxon. And she's a colored lady, me a white man. That's the same picture with this Jesus of Nazareth and the Samaritan woman. See? How he let her know that there was no difference. All of us are God's children. We all originally came from Adam. And the places we lived in uh, turned our skins yellow, brown, white, and had nothing to do with us, springs of God. Amen. If that colored woman was, if I was sick tonight, she could give me a blood transfusion. Yes, sir. And if, uh, and if the yellow man was uh, sick, she could give him a blood transfusion. But don't never put animal blood with you. It'll kill you. Thanks. We are, God has made of all men one blood. One blood is an all man. Our colors have nothing to do with it. Now, here's a white man and a colored woman, and, and I'm a southerner and she's a northerner. Here we are. Brothers and sisters, I trust tonight in Christ. I don't know. I can't tell. But if we're not, it's only her thought, man. Now, if the Lord Jesus will return, and will say to this woman what he did right to this Samaritan woman. She may have the same trouble. I don't know. We'll know in a few minutes if the Lord will 
permit. Now, let us pray as I speak to the woman. Now, you don't have to look at me, sister. Just be in prayer is all I ask you to do. And it's not a mind reading. It's just, you're just a human being standing there. And if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what the, you're here for and what you have need of, would you believe it with all your heart? Now, if you're sick and I told you, oh, lady, just pray the Lord. You're going to get well. Trouble's all over. Well, that you might say, I believe, Brother Brandon. I believe I would take that for his word. Uh, well, that would be all right. But that wouldn't be, you just have to take my word. But if the Lord Jesus is here, that will reveal something that you're in trouble about. Or something that you've done in your life that keeps you from getting what you're asking for. Or something like that. You don't know yourself whether that's the truth or not. You don't know that. Is that right, Adi? You don't know that. And if he knows what was, surely he knows what will be. Now, may the Lord grant as I look to him and see what the woman's trouble is. The first thing, if the audience still hears my voice, I see the woman with her hands up. She, or she has spiritual problems that she's, uh, she's in trouble about. That is right, isn't it, lady? It's spiritual. You, you're all muddled up, as we call it. You, you, you think that, here's another thing. I hear you in your prayer, seeking for God to give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you come here tonight as you're praying, and you come here for me to lay hands on you so that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right, raise your hand. That's right. That's true, isn't it? I trust, trust that God will give it to you. Do you believe me to be his prophet? Do you believe I actually saw that? What if I tell you your name was May? Would you believe me? Your last name's Adam. Is that right? Just wave your hand. How do you believe it? I know you're going to receive it. Lord Jesus, grant it to her. For I have to be blessed. Have faith in God. Don't down. Believe. Another color girl. How do you do? You. You believe Jesus Christ the same yesterday day and forever? <clears throat> you believe me to be his servant? You were praying or something, huh? Eh? You touched something. It turned me. Now you're suffering with a kind of sinus headache trouble. That's right. And then you're in prayer also for this little boy sitting next to you. For the epilepsy, and you want God to heal him of that. Isn't that right? That's right. Raise up your hand. You believe it? You can have it if you believe it. Lay your hands on the little lad. Father God, I pray that Satan will not be able to get by with this. I, I pray that, that you will heal both of them in Jesus' name. Amen. But I still see a man standing beside this woman. She's praying for somebody too. Your trouble is in your spine. You got a spinal trouble. That's right. Then you believe me to be God's prophet? You're praying for a brother. And he's blind, isn't he? <laughs> Amen. If you believe it with all your heart, you can have it. Oh Lord, be near unto this woman and we bless her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she go and receive that what she's asked for. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't doubt it. Oh, right right. Hallelujah. Have faith. Don't doubt. All things are possible to them that believe. Are you believing? Are you out there in the audience? Just start praying. Just start praying. Believe. Now here's a, a lady with this a patient over. I suppose you're changing one another. That's right. The Lord Jesus knows the soul. Now, it's feeling that pulling coming from the audience. Now, what it is, it's your faith. Now, look, friends. What God does right here, he's doing out there just the same. See? If I would come and pray, anointures, or whatever more, that wouldn't have, that would do. It would just be your faith. You have to believe it anyhow. 
If you'll just believe right where you are right now, you will re receive it just the same. I challenge you to believe. Our lady standing here, God be merciful to this woman, for she is in serious condition. Her trouble is in her bowels. That's right. And it's paralyzed, and the bowels are shrinking up. You even, when you do an enema, it just the water comes back. You're very seriously, isn't that right, sister? All right, come here now. Let us pray. Everyone pray for this woman. Look, I have a question from God. Now, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, I ask for this woman's healing. Thou art God, and alone you can heal. I pray that you'll grant it to her as I lay my hands up on her. While the Holy Spirit, that the one who knows her life, is present, may she be healed. I can bring the healing. That's the name of God. And for the life to be extended in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, if you believe with all your heart, you, you should have your hand. Okay. Now, what about you, sisters? You believe God take care of our thyroid trouble and make you well? Was praying for that when I was praying for the woman. Or standing before me was a red-headed woman praying with thyroid trouble. That's right. You're the woman. When it came back, there's a light above you right now. See? Now, if that's right, raise up your hand if you wasn't praying. There you are. All right. I go and receive your healing. You're, you touched something. You never touched me. I don't know. You've never seen me. You touched something. What was it? The high priest, Christ Jesus, who can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. If thou canst believe, have faith. Let the lady stay there just a minute. Turn around. Look this way, lady. You don't have to look. Do you believe it all your heart? What's your spirit? So, but you believe it all when you run to kill the cancer and make it complete for all of you? You believe it all? I'm going to lay on the floor. God, this woman is in a dying condition. God, I'm going to say it, Lord. I pray for the rest. May it be known now that nothing else can be done but your grace. May it be lifted up quickly and touch the hand of Christ and may it be lifted up quickly until the high height that you will open your soil and we pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't have it, sir. May your strength out of time for me be well and healed of all your heart. May God grant it to you. You think God can give you the same thing to make you well? That's a horrible thing, isn't it? But Christ, the Son of God, can heal and make well. Come here, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, see this man right on the shadow of death. I pray that you'll be merciful to him and make him well and heal him. For I ask it in Jesus Christ's name and for his glory. Amen. Now, sir, stop all your head. Well, that's what they hear now. Don't smoke and live like they go on. Live for the Lord. And God will make you well. So good. I have faith in God. All right? You think God will heal that bowel trouble for you, lady, and make you well? You believe it? All right. If you believe it with all your heart, it won't bother you no more. You touched something, didn't you, sister? You touched Christ. Amen. Now I challenge your faith to believe. I just ask you in Christ's name to believe it. Okay? Let's see what will take place if you can believe it. I believe that every one of you can be healed right now. See, that's what that's what alarms me. See, this is what gets me. See, when I can see the Lord Jesus with His blessing come right down and He take it page by page by the Bible. Saying, this is what he did. Here's what he promised. Read it yourself. This is what he said he'd do. When he come, this is just exactly what he You read it right through. I'll challenge you then and say, believe it. You'll come right down and do the same thing that he did then, prove it right straight back over. And yet, he walked out just the same as he walked in. Can you see that America is finished? The spirit has gone from the nation till the only thing left is just a little bit of emotion. That's right. 
Don't the Bible say that this will be the Lady of Sin age? What was the Lady of Sin age? A lukewarm church. Just enough that it could be a little emotional, and that's about all there is to it, you see. Dance floor music to playing, and, and it's all over, just drop down, you see. Oh, we ought to be on fire. Our hearts are burning. Christ is coming. What has the devil done to us? He just moves you down to a place until you just seem like, well, it's all, well, bless God, here I am. See, that's the trouble of it, friends. Please believe him. Have faith in him. Believe it with all your heart. And say, yes, Lord, I receive it. I accept it. If the little bitty things right this meeting will took place in Africa tonight, you know what it took place? There wouldn't be a feeble one among us. That's right. A cotton top, you don't know which is right and left hand. That's right. I offered one prayer, and Dr. F.F. F. Bosworth estimated and counted as it went through 25,000 healings after three people have been on the platform. Seven big truckloads of crutches and wheelchairs and things were stuffed off of the ground immediately after prayer was made. Seven big cattle trucks full of clubs and stretchers and things. And you, uh, colored people have been here. That was your people. That was your people in Africa who doesn't have the things that you have. They don't even have clothes to wear. And I can't understand how that they think that civilization brings Christ. You got it mistaken. Christ brings civilization. Right. And these civilization we have today is not Christ controlled. Let me ask you something. Women each year are taking more clothes off each year. So you get down to it's a horrible thing to see young and old on the street. And you go to church and call yourself somebody sanctified people. And with the Holy Spirit, church members, supposed to be elect. And each year you take off your clothes, ladies, and when them raw heathens with not nothing on, a belt, no clothes up in this world at all. And as soon as they were converted, they were always like this to walk out. If Christ to a heathen who didn't know any difference of bring that condemnation that uh, they know they're naked, what about people who are supposed to know him in civilized? Something's wrong somewhere. And I'm sure it's not with Christ. It's our modern civilization. See, right now, when Christ doing what he... I challenge anybody to prove that's not the Bible. And that isn't Christ. You can't do it. It is Christ. Then if he says it, what's the matter with us? We should be a rejoicing and thanking him and accepting our healing and saying, yes, Lord, I reconsecrate my life to you. I, I want to love you. I want to do everything I can. It ought not to come where a minister has to tell you to do that. It ought to be coming from your heart. Not through a psychological, intellectual conception, but through a heartfelt expression to Christ. Amen. I guess this is a man. I don't know him, sir. We're strangers to each other. If the Lord Jesus were revealed to this man, here's a, a Nathaniel now. A man standing here. A Nathaniel. If the Lord Jesus were revealed to this man, trouble? Would you be willing to accept Jesus as your healer? Uh, don't pinch your flesh, but pinch your soul with the word. Wake me up, Lord. Open my eyes. What's the matter with me? Am I missing this? What's that preacher trying to get to me? I'm trying to get this. <laughs> you, you, you say, well, Brother Van, I've gone to church for years, but you'll die in your sins. See? What is sin? Unbelief. See, if uh, uh, quickly you receive it and accept him and praise him and say, thank you, Lord, let it be done. Well, for the building tonight, perfectly well. If you're not, you're as good as well. If you've accepted your healing in the seed form by the word. See, that's what, I'm afraid that these big cities need a lot of teaching. <laughs> I'm sure they just work up on emotions and so forth, so they need real scriptural teaching. How to receive it? One of these days, God willing, before the end comes, I want him to let me get a great big place here somewhere where I can stay for a couple, three months or a couple, three, four, five weeks or something. So we can just stay right into it. Just stay with the word. Thank you. God grant it. Now, this man sitting here. If the Lord Jesus will grant this to this man, are we strangers to each other, sir? We are. We're, we're strangers. If the Lord Jesus will show this man, show to us, what he's there praying for. How many in here say, I'll accept it right then. I, I'm, I'm right now going to open my heart and turn my face right towards Christ. 
May the Lord grant you. Got trouble in his neck. Is that right, sir? Raise your hand. Now, that can't be guessing. That's the truth. That's got to be true. He's the judge. Now, how did I know it? I saw him. What did Jesus say to Philip? I saw you. I are an Israelite in whom there's no guile. So how do you know me? He said, I saw you when you were down the tree. Let's talk to the man just a little longer. Would that satisfy you if the Lord will tell something else to him? Let him be the judge. I'm only just looking, sir, to see what to say to Yes, you have other trouble, right? It's trouble with somebody else. It's your brother. And your brother's at home with a nervous breakdown. Do you believe? Not only that, but I see some sort of an institution appear here. It's your mother. She's a mental institution. Do you believe? Now put your hands on each other. Lay your hands while you've got your hands up like that. You raise your hands to Christ. The Lord bless you, my brother. The Father God, give you the desire of your heart, may be go tonight and receive everything that is asked for in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Now, see you people here. God has promised you. I'm here to help you, friend. Why would I leave my home, my little children? Why would I come here for this Christmas time when I'm gone all the years? Why would I come here for this Christmas? I feel that maybe the Lord would help me to help you. And that's what I'm here for. See? No matter if you're losing fruit, you say, Brother Brown, you say you fix Yes, sir. Uh, half a million at a time. That's true. Tens of thousands. It don't make any difference. There's only three of them. It's worth all to do. You can do something. Now, this is your dissertation. Believe me, as this servant is your brother. Now, if you have the need of anything right now, while his presence is here, this weakens you. You could understand if the Son of God saw one thing and he said, I thank one of them, what would be a sinner saved by grace? What would it be to me? Right. Certainly. It's just day in and out. Because he promised more than this to you. Right. Right. For I go to the promise. Now, believe him with all your heart, and you'll receive it. Now, you sick people, all the sick raise up your hands, all the sick people. Now, you sit him by and wave your hands over on one another, the sick and the needy. And let's pray together now for Father to heal. Uh, just believe it with all your heart. There's a lady right there, lady, sitting, the uh, elderly lady, right back there with her hands up. Uh, yes, put your hands on her there, if you will. And over here, there's some people, too, with their hands up. Lay your hands on each other. Now, young and old, while your heads are bowed, just a moment. I wonder if there'd be a sinner here that would raise up your hand or stand up to your feet. A sinner would say, I now want to accept Christ while I'm in his presence. I've always wanted to do this, but tonight I now believe with all my heart that he's here and I want to accept him as my personal Savior. Would you stand to your feet a sinner that's never accepted him before? And you, a sinner is an unbeliever, of course. And now you, you may be a church member, but you still be a sinner if you disbelieve. Now, I don't mean intellectually believe. I mean from your heart belief. And if you are, would you stand? I suppose there's not one for that I'm thankful for. I believe you'd be honest and do it. Now, let us pray all together. All you people who know how to pray, you pray with me now. Heavenly Father, we now come and bring this people to thee. In the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus. We come because that we have been bidden to come. And now in his presence as we stand, waiting for the Holy Spirit to take the word and plant this word right down in their heart. You hear, Lord, your great spirit just moving over the audience. Now heal each one. And I say to Satan, who has bound these people with sickness, do you not understand, Satan, that you've lost the battle? Jesus, the Son of God, is present. We charge you. By the commission of the Holy Spirit that you leave every person in here. Come out, Satan, in Jesus Christ's name. Go from this audience. And these people might go home free and go eat their meals and enjoy health again. For Jesus
Jesus Christ promised it. And we now take the initiative by faith, we believe it, in Jesus Christ's name.